Hey, FinCon community, this is Bethany Bayless, and I am here with Jerry Detweiler from NAV. And Jerry is an incredible, just freelancer herself. You were a freelancer at one time, right, Jerry? I was for many yeah. years, over a decade. And now you work with NAV, who just picked up the freelancing track at FinCon this year. Is that right? Yeah, we're so excited excited to be sponsoring the freelancing track and, and talking to freelancers at FinCon. I'm so excited that you are here. Can you just tell us, for the people who don't know who NAV is, what you do, just explain to us a little bit about NAV and the company. Sure. Well, FinConners always are checking their credit scores, right? You know where you stand on your credit. NAV is the source to check your business credit scores for free, along with personal credit scores. And then we give easy, free tools to build strong business credit and get financing for your small business. I love that. And what kind of small businesses do you work with typically? We will work with any small business, including those who are just starting up as well as those who are established. But we have a variety of, of programs and educational offerings and tools that can help the small business owner, including the freelancer, really set their business off on the right track and then succeed financially. I think that's awesome. And I'm so grateful that you are here, not only as a brand perspective, but also from the perspective of a freelancer. But let's focus today on brands and how you work with freelancers through NAV. Do you do you work with freelancers? What does that look like? What do they do for you? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so at NAV, we absolutely do work with freelancers, and we have some great FinCon uh, group members who are freelancers for us, and we're growing our content all the time. We've been around since 2012, and we've been growing rapidly, so like many brands, we have a need for good content that helps our readers, and very often freelancers who have experience with financial content are a great fit for us. So we keep adding more to our, to our team of freelancers answers and we love working with them. Well, and I think that's a great thing to be able to do is to work with companies and be able to freelance with them. From your perspective as a brand, could you give me the top five qualities that you look for in a freelancer and what freelancers can be doing to be the best freelancer that they can be? Yeah, absolutely. Well, starting at the very beginning from the pitch where they want to reach out to us, don't be afraid to reach out to brands. And I would also say, don't be afraid to reach out to them more than once because they may not need your services right now, but then in three months or six months, they close that round, round of funding and they do need more freelancers. And in fact, in the FinCon 18 virtual pass, there's a great ses session by Lindsay Neural, and she talks about how to find brands to work with. She has some really good tidbits. So you don't, if you don't have the virtual pass, you should get that and listen to her session because she talks about that. But I would say don't be afraid to reach out. And when you reach out, really make sure that you take some time to look at what the brand is doing. So look at their blog, look at the content they're producing, and see how you can fit in. A short, sweet pitch is best initially, but make sure you're Cognizant. And I'll give you a, a, a great example real quick. So NAV is actually, it's not short for anything. It's not an acronym. <laughs> it's NAV.com, but it's capital N, lowercase AV. And we consistently get uh, outreach that has capital N, capital A, capital V. And it's logical, right? But that actually is a Canadian wrapper oh. <laughs> or a cryptocurrency. Well, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not, not the same. Us. Not the same. And it's a little detail. Look, we're not going to reject someone's pitch because they didn't catch that. Right. But it does help to really understand what they're looking for and tailor your pitch to what they are doing and say, hey, here's how I can fit in. Here's how I can help. I did ask our wonderful editor, Connor Wilson, hey, what do you like in a pitch? And he said, I like it short and sweet. He said, I don't want a 2000 word pitch, but I'd like a link to a couple of relevant articles that you've done so I can see how you write and then just an opportunity to reach out. And again, consistency does help. If you need to reach out a couple of times, that's okay. Uh, just do it, you know, time it periodically and, and we'd love to hear from you. I have a quick question when it comes to the pitch. What do people, and this is something I always kind of struggle with. If I'm sending a pitch, what do I put in the subject line? That's a great, um, that's a great question, but I, I think to be, know. I think to be direct so that it, so that it identifies the fact that you're looking to freelance. So something to the effect of, uh, I'm 
freelancer looking for, you know, looking to partner or looking to work with you, um, be very direct so they know what they're what they're in for. And just make sure it's not like one of those spammy emails that's saying, add, add a link to my blog or, you know, I write content for free and you can tell it. You know, anyway, not right. those kind of pitches. We're right. looking for something more specific. Yeah. yeah. And are you even able to say, you know, freelance pitch? Like, are you able to let them know it's yeah. a pitch for freelance? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. That's what you're doing. And and the, the editor wants to know it. Look, the editor is super busy. The editor, he or she are, is going through articles, editing articles, publishing articles. They want something short and sweet that they can quickly respond to. And, and then if it's a fit, they'll follow up. Awesome. And what's the next thing when it comes to being an excellent freelancer? So the next thing is once you get the assignment to be, you know, consistent and high quality, um, being consistent is really important. Meeting deadlines, that's the number one thing that mm. editors are going to look for because as brands are growing their content, some of them are, we're publishing about 10 to 12 stories a week, but sometimes we have efforts where we could gather 25 or 30 stories on a particular topic that we're trying to, you know, target for. So you really need to be very consistent about meeting deadlines. And look, life happens. Things may happen. If it does, mm. reach out to that editor as quickly as possible. Let them know what you can do and what you can't do so they can turn to either another freelancer or they can reschedule the piece. But communication is really, really important. Then being very consistent in, in how you work with them and you're turning things in on time, that's going to win you so many points with the brand. Absolutely. And I think for, you know, when I'm working with freelancers sometimes for different projects, I love it when they give it to me a day early. It's like, oh, wow, you got that. I, I think I would go to you e before someone maybe even who turns it in on time or e especially five minutes late, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of like your credit, right? You pay it early <laughs> <laughs> and then you know there's no problems. <laughs> right? Make it automatic. That's right. <laughs> I feel like that's a different that's a different bunny trail. <laughs> but that's a great point, being consistent and meeting deadlines. I know that deadlines are always the biggest thing when it comes to being a great freelancer because people want to work with people who meet their deadlines and so yeah absolutely that's awesome and what's the next point quality work so you know an article that meets the specifications that has documented sources so that can be fact-checked very easily if necessary uh, you really just want to produce quality work that fits the style of the brand and each brand is going to be a little bit different so when you first start working with a brand you want to read some of the articles look at the style that they use ask them if they needed AP style or something mm -hmm. else and just really um, focus on that so that you are producing good work that they'll want to run your pieces again and again. Yeah. Could you give us maybe some of the nuances that people might not necessarily look for? So you mentioned AP style. That's definitely mm -hmm. a certain style when it comes to grammar, when it comes to all those wonderful things. Are there any other nuances that people might not be on the lookout for that would benefit for them when they're looking for the style of a brand? Yeah, so a financial source in particular probably has a lot of compliance requirements, mm. and so you want to ask about those. You want to ask about mentioning other sources. Are there sources I cannot turn to, or are there sources I can turn to? And Bethany, you know, one of the things that I do in my job is a lot of media interviews, and so freelancers will reach out to me to, to interview me, and there's some cases where it's not a fit because mm. that particular brand, you know, isn't looking for other brands to be a source and, and that's fine so you, knowing those things up front is going to save you time you don't want to spend 20 minutes interviewing someone and then find out oh I can't even run their quotes so right. that's a good thing to ask about and then anything related to the brand in terms of how you describe them abbreviations financial terms that are relevant to those industries that those are the kinds of things that will just help make it a lot smoother for you as you start to onboard and become a hopefully a trusted reliable freelance source for them definitely and as as nav and again this is very unique to each each company maybe that freelancers work for but do you have a style guide or is there something that you have created that maybe a freelancer could ask you for up front so that you, they know that they're for sure meeting all those requirements yeah, and this is really a great question because for us, it's evolved. You know, we've been around since 2012, so we're a fairly young company, and we have put together brand guidelines. So mm -hmm. that's something that we have developed over time, and it talks about our voice, how we talk to small business owners, how we communicate to small business owners. So that's the kind of thing that I think would be very helpful to someone who is coming in as a freelancer and realizing an example would be 
we're not just talking to a startup. We may be talking to a very established business as well. So you have to bridge that gap between the young business and the more established business and make them both feel like you're talking to them. And that's, it takes some time to develop those nuances, but if you can get the brand's voice, and not, I'm not talking about the way that would sell out your voice because you have a voice and a message to communicate as well. But if you can be in sync with their voice, then you're going to be a very popular or freelancer for that brand. I think that's great. And is that something that people can just ask for in their pitch or would that be maybe a second email? Yeah, I think once you get an assignment, okay. I think that would be a great thing to ask for. Do you have any brand guidelines? Do you follow AP, the AP style guidelines or something else? Um, are there any any types of sources that I should or should not interview? Any types of sources you do or do not want me to use as research sto- sources in a story? And those kinds of things can be very helpful. It can also be helpful for you as you're interviewing people because when you're interviewing someone for an article, one of the main questions they're going to ask you is, will you link to me? And so you want to know what's the policy of the brand. Will they allow you to link to a source that you interview or not? And that may be a factor in terms of who wants to spend a lot of time with you on the phone versus who doesn't. That's just the reality of the world we live in. So that's a good question to ask as well. Yeah, that's excellent. The fourth thing would be to read your published pieces. Oh. So if you do not get all the editing notes on the piece from the editor, they may not, they may just edit and publish it. Then you need to see what changes did they make so that you aren't doing the same thing over and over again. So if you see that they're changing, this is one of my favorite examples. Um, Kelly Geldis, who's our director of marketing here and works with many of our, has worked with many of our freelancers. She came from the journalism world and she hates brick and mortar. It's bricks and mortar. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> bricks and mortar, says Kelly. So if that was the kind of thing, which comes up in a business article like, enough, right? If you saw that getting edited and you said, hey, oh, that's that's the right way to write that. The next time you do it, it's going to be annoying, right? If you mm. keep using that same term. So read your edited pieces so that you can see what kinds of changes are being made and you adapt as you go along. So you want to make sure you're incorporating the feedback that you're getting into the next piece that you write for that brand. Oh, that's so good. I I love that because there's, there's certain things that maybe you just wouldn't even think about. And then when you read them edited, you're like, oh, that's great. How do people, how do you recommend that people, do you recommend people save a copy of what they submitted. So, you know, obviously like up in a word file and just, they sent it over, let's save that and then just compare them side by side. That could be one way, or if it's fresh in your mind, if it's a story Mm. that you just wrote, now you see it published that you'll probably, once you read it through, you'll probably catch a few things and you'll notice some, in some cases, they'll use a, a, some kind of content management system that will show you the edits so you can Mm. see the edits. And that's fine. If you want to do it that way, it's just, you want to make sure that you're following their feedback. So the next story that you produce is even easier for them to edit. Remember, editing can take a lot of time. And the editor is editing a lot of different writers. So you want to make it as easy as possible for the editor. If you can provide source notes for facts, for example, or a link to the research study that you used, make it as easy as possible for them to edit and get that story published so they can go and move to the next story that they have to edit. Oh, that's amazing. I just, I love these points. They're so, they're so good and very actionable. People can go and take these today and, and either send a pitch or they can make sure they're meeting those deadlines, but also maybe go ask for a style guide that people maybe haven't, if they've worked with a brand before, if they just got an assignment, those things are very, very good to know moving forward. And what is your very last tip for us? My last tip is to make it easy for us to pay you. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) And you would not, you would be surprised. Uh, Some freelancers are not very organized when it comes to invoicing Mm. or they may may make make it difficult. So for example, we had a great freelancer who moved overseas, but needed the money wired overseas. And that was just difficult for our accounting department. And so you want to make it super easy for them to pay you invoice on time. Remember the accounting department may need to close out the invoices in a certain period of time for 
for that month. Mm, and if yeah. you went on vacation and didn't invoice, you create extra headaches for them as well as for your own personal finances. So have a system and talk to them. What what's the what's the easiest way for me to invoice you and get paid? Give them the information they, they need and make sure you do it on time. Definitely. And do you and it's just an interesting question. What kind of ways do you pay freelancers? Is it always direct deposit, maybe a check, or do you do PayPal or Venmo or what, how do you pay freelancers? Um, yeah, different brands will do it different right, ways. Right. And having been a freelancer myself, you'll find out what their guidelines are. They may say we need an invoice by this day of the month. A lot of them like to pay by cat, uh, by check, but mm -hmm. some do like to use um, direct deposit. So you want to make it as easy for them as possible. Yeah. And what the way that they prefer to pay, you want to make it easy for them to pay you in that way. So you may have to set it up that you have have a PayPal account if they want to pay you that way. Mm -hmm. If you're a digital nomad and you're traveling, you want to make sure that you have a U.S.-based bank account that will be easy for them to either direct deposit to or have a mailbox in the U.S. Maybe someone's going to gather your mail and deposit that check for you. So as you're traveling and you're out of the country, they don't have to try to figure out how to get a check to you. So just think about those things as you're setting up your business and make it easy for them. You know you'll get paid fast easier and that's how we survive right <laughs> absolutely i these tips are awesome and i love just your perspective as someone who has been on both sides of that of that freelancing table and you, is there anything else that you just want to add to it, anything else uh, for our freelancers well, freelancing can be a, a fantastic career. So build relationships. And once you build those relationships, you do a good job, you provide consistent work, you will get referred again and again. People move to different places and then they remember who they enjoyed working with as a freelancer. They get jobs from other places. It, it can be a very, very um, satisfying way to, to get your work out in the world and to, to build a solid business for yourself as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jerry Detweiler. We so appreciate you. And where can people find you? Well, I'm at NAV, Jerry, G-E-R-R-I at NAV. And if you send me a pitch, I'll forward it to our editor. Happy oh. to look at it. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.